Good Friday morning. It's September 18th, 2020. I'm Guy McPherson of GuyMcPherson.com, otherwise known as Nature Bats Last. And we shot the last episode of these videos Wednesday morning, and I realized I made a mistake as soon as we finished recording when I indicated that nobody was listening. And that led my email inbox to be filled to capacity. So I'm sorry, I underestimated your willingness to listen to me, of all people. So thank you for those email messages, and thank you for letting me know that you appreciate that we are doing this. All right, so here we go. On to the headlines, Washington Post, and these are from the last two days, going back nearly 48 hours. From the Washington Post, CDC director says coronavirus vaccines won't be widely available till the middle of next year. And then right after that, Anthony Fauci was quoted in the New York Post, Fauci, I would still put my money on vaccine by November or December. So apparently that vaccine that's going to be available in November or December is not going to be available to most of us. That's the take I get from that. Or maybe Fauci's lying again to provide cover for the health industry, as he has done before. Or maybe this is yet another example of the corporate media doing its job. It's two jobs, really. Distract, divide. That's what the corporate media is all about. That's why it remains in business. That's why all the corporate media outlets remain in business, is because of their abundant ability to distract and divide the masses. All right, this reminds me of something from ProPublica, Jan July 23rd of this year, Where Will Everyone Go? This paper, written in collaboration with New York Times Magazine, indicates that humans will live forever and we just need to go somewhere else. We need to outrun climate change somehow and go to the safe space. For me, as I've been saying for many years, the place to go is in. The only way out is in. So turn inside, people. You're actually going to die. All species go extinct. All individual organisms die. We're among those, and we're headed for both in the very near future. It's time to come to grips with it. I hear all the time, YOLO, you only live once. I think it's far more appropriate to say YODO, you only die once. You get to live every day. You get to live every minute. Let's do that. Quoting Reuters, actually this appeared at Reuters, my mistake. Bruised dollar may bounce if U.S. election gets chaotic. So if the U.S. election goes crazy, then the dollar is going to improve in value. I'm not going to repeat that again. You can just play it back and discover for yourself that it makes no sense whatsoever. The whole country is falling apart. The US dollar is going down the toilet. It's circling the drain as we speak. And if the election goes south, if bad things happen with the uni upcoming United States election, the dollar will bounce. If that makes any sense to you, you should be doing these videos. And you certainly should be replacing him because he's got nothing to say. From Vox, USPS, that's US, United States Postal Service, USPS delays are affecting the businesses that need it most. Of course, the businesses that need, that need the Postal Service the most, because the Postal Service is relatively inexpensive, the businesses that need it, need it most are the small businesses. And they're not getting help from anywhere, least of all from the United States government. Again from Reuters, oil falls as crews return to U.S. Gulf rigs. Economic recovery stalls. Recovery? Was there an economic recovery? I thought we were in the midst of a, an event worse than the Great Depression in the United States. That's what I read every now and then. And then I read headlines such as this that indicates the economic recovery has stalled. It never took off. It never got started. There was no economic recovery. There's an economic recovery probably more correctly stated, a local recovery when states opened back up again in light of the pandemic. But the pandem pandemic isn't over, folks. Really, it's just getting started. 
This from CNN. The pandemic didn't solve climate change. This week's disasters are proof. Yet another example of a corporate outlet, in this case CNN, refusing to acknowledge the aerosol masking effect. Because if you don't acknowledge the aerosol masking effect, you encourage the masses to conserve so that the sociopaths can take what's left. From the Miami Herald, one name is left on the hurricane list and it's only September. Why so many storms? Gee, hard to imagine, isn't it? Hmm, might it have something to do with the fact that we're in the midst of abrupt, irreversible climate change? Maybe it's because the Earth has warmed at least 2C above the 1750 baseline. Maybe it's because that warming is continuing and when all those aerosols fell out in the wake of a reduction in industrial activity as a result of the coronavirus, maybe that caused it to be even warmer. None of that's going to be admitted in the Miami Herald or any other corporate outlet, by the way. From The Guardian, something actually accurate. It's hard to imagine this snuck in to The Guardian. Venus is a warning to all of us on Earth. Venus? Wow. They actually wrote it right there in the headline. From CNN Travel, Qantas offers a seven hour flight to nowhere. Yes, we are so enormously privileged, including people in Australia, New Zealand, Japan, the United States, Western Europe. We are so privileged that we'll take a seven hour flight, even if it doesn't go anywhere, just because we like the thrill of the takeoff just because we like looking out over the landscape down below from 30,000 feet. Yes, people are willing to pay large sums of money just because they miss flying. You can have all of my turns. Flying is the worst. Traveling is great. Getting there is awful. From NPR, quote, I have to work end quote. Agricultural workers in the West harvest crops through fire smoke. Yes. Yes. People have to work. Go figure. Some people have to work to actually make enough money to buy food, including those people who are growing the food and harvesting the food. From MarketWatch, stock markets have now seen the quote, peak of Fed stimulus, end quote, unless these two things happen. What are these two things that have to happen? According to Lena Komeleva, chief economist at G Plus Economics, the markets have now seen the peak of federal stimulus barring a government error or a market shock. So I know a lot of people who tell me that we're going to have an asteroid hit the earth and that's what's going to save us. I know a lot of people who tell me all kinds of crazy things. We're headed into a little ice age, a big ice age and a forever ice age, all these things. And that's going to save us. Now we're relying on government errors. That's the only thing keeping us from the Fed stimulus not working anymore. Isn't that what government <laughs> yes. Yes. In fact, you could argue that the whole thing that the government has been doing for, oh, I don't know, 200 and some years is one big error after another, a whole series of errors. So if it takes only an error to save us, maybe I shouldn't sell out so quickly. eh? All right, here we are at 9.33 a.m. Eastern Time from Central Florida and stock markets don't have any idea what's going on. The Dow is down slightly. The Nasdaq is powering up again. Tech stocks are taking off again, up 45 points at the open. And the S&P 500 is up just slightly. So again, it makes no sense. Perhaps it's nonsense. That's my call.